Hello, chess friend. You are about to witness a top-class encounter between Veselin Topolov and Luke van Veli, played 2003 in Monte Carlo. This was a Melody Amber tournament, which uh, made the players face each other both in rapid games and under blindfold conditions. This here is one of the blindfold games. So please have this in mind before being too harsh in your judgment of the following moves. But the game was still played uh, on a very high level, I would say, despite the players not being able to see the board. Topolov opened the game with knight f3. Did you know that knight f3 is the most successful move for white? It scores with an incredible 55.2%. By contrast, d4 only scores with 54.2. That's 1% less. And e4 even much less with only 53%. Does it mean that knight f3 is objectively the best move and clearly stronger than e4? I wouldn't think so. Have in mind that e4 is played by many beginning players. They play e4 or d4, but mostly e4. So the, co the player quality um, with the move e4 is much lower than the player quality with knight f3. Knight f3 uh, is not used by beginners. It's more an expert choice. Why is knight f3 used by experts? because it's very flexible. This is the unique quality of knight f3. White still can decide later whether he comes up with g3, as happened in the game, or c4 on move 2 and d4, move 2 or move 3. So there are a lot of transpositions now possible for white. And for black, this poses a problem not to be move ordered. Now, finally played classical move d5 g3. Also g3 does not, um, or with the move g3, white doesn't commit himself yet. It can still be a lot of things. c5, bishop g2, knight c6. <clears throat> knight c6 looks like the normal move, but I think knight f6 is a more solid one. Now, Black is threatening e5. If you are a King's Indian aficionado, you wouldn't mind e5, right? You would play castling. This did not happen in the game. But after e5, objectively, Black is already slightly better after, let's say, d3 and now bishop e7 exclamation mark. That's better than knight f6, e4, d4. We have a King's Indian position with colors reversed, but the extra tempo doesn't help white a lot. Knight a3 is the best move, and now g5. I will leave it here. So this is how the engine <coughs> claims a slight advantage for black. After knight c6, there's only one good move for white. It is d4. Now the position can be called um, Greenfield Indian with colors reversed. White has an extra tempo now in the Greenfield. In the King's Indian, it was not of much use for white, but here it is. It makes a big difference, this one extra tempo. Knight of six castles, and now black has to decide whether he wants to play very solidly or ambitiously. The ambitious, ambitious move would be cd4, so he copies what white would do in the Grunfeld. Knight takes d4, e5, building up a strong pawn center, knight c6, bc6. The problem is, however, with this pawn center, <clears throat> that it is quite exposed and will now be attacked. This is the spirit of the Grunfeld Indian. Bishop e6, knight c3, queen d7, queen a4. And now white will follow up with bishop g5 and rook d1, putting the pawn d5 under enormous pressure. 
This position is still playable for white, but it's quite difficult to handle it. You really have to know, you know, what you are doing. I wouldn't like this position with black. So the move e6, which happened in this game, is more solid. But now white plays c4, so now white really occupies the center and um, claims his ambitions in terms of space. Black has three moves, bishop e7, c takes d4, and d takes c4. Only now, after d takes c4, we can give this position a name. Before it was all pretty vague, because there were still many potential transpositions in play, but now we have a definite outcome. This position is called the open Catalan. I will show you now how the open Catalan normally would come about. d4, d5, c4, e6, that is the queen's gambit declined. Knight f3, knight f6, and now the move g3 is initiating the Catalan. It is a very profound and deep opening which is championed by many very strong players, including Magnus Carlsen. D takes e4. Actually, here, black can also play bishop e7, followed by a castling, or he can give a check, and after bishop d2, retreating the bishop to e7, followed by a castling. This would then be named the closed Catalan. But if black takes on c4, it is the open Catalan. Bishop g2, c5, castles, knight c6. This is exactly the same position as we had in our game. So, in our game, the position arose after now d takes c4. And here is white who has a choice. The game move was queen a4, but there are three alternatives. There is knight e5 directly attacking the knight c6, d takes c5 and knight a3, intending to recapture the pawn c4 with the knight. Okay, let's come back to our game, queen a4. Pinning the knight and also intending to win back the pawn on c4. Now black played bishop d7, a very good move. He should refrain from c takes d4. What happens now? White can take this pawn. Unveiling the bishop, this g2 bishop is what many black players fear quite a lot. It is a Catalan bishop which bears down on black's position, applying pressure on the center pawn d5, on the knight c6, as in this very position, and sometimes just on the pawn b7 or the rook a8. So now black has to take the knight on d4, bishop takes c6 check. This bishop is untouchable because after b takes c6, queen takes c6, the rook a8 would be lost. So bishop d7 only move. Now white comes up with rook d1 attacking the queen. The queen cannot move because of bishop takes d7 check afterwards. So bishop takes bishop only move. And now white has to play the desperado, takes, takes, rook takes d4. Now we see black's pawn structure uh, being distorted, right? There is uh, the weak pawn on c6 and an isolated pawn as well on a7. Here I give you one line, only one, that's enough, which with which black might try to get some initiative here going. So rook takes e4, here we have set pawn structure, but now black's rook tries to penetrate, and actually does penetrate white's position on the first rank, but is it really dangerous for white? The answer is no. After king d7 defending the c6 pawn, knight c3 attacking the rook, the rook stays on the first rank, keeping the bishop c1 pinned, that is black's idea. But now after e4, preventing a future activation of the knight on the square d5, bishop d6, and now b3, this is how white is 
um, solving the problem of the first rank. e5, bishop, b2 takes, takes. Here we can conclude that white has a static, a long-term advantage um, in the shape of the better pawn structure as black's pawns are weak on the queen side. Coming back to our game, after queen a4, black played the better move, bishop d7, securely protecting the c6 knight and also vacating the square c8 for the rook. Now white has two lines. The game saw queen takes c4. Instead, white could also take on c5. After bishop c5, queen c4, bishop e7, knight c3, castles, rook d1, rook c8. However, the position, albeit um, seeing white having a, still a slight edge, is more or less equal. So this is really no problem for black. Queen takes c4 is more ambitious. Now black has the choice between c takes d4, what happened in our game, or the alternative move b5, which is a good um, alternative move actually. Maybe I would play b, b5 here with black. Now taking on b5 is not good because of I think knight d4 might be the best and then the e2 pawn is under attack and the queen and if then queen let's say d3 bishop b5 would win the e2 pawn, right? So the queen has, has to go away. After queen c3, b4, queen d3, rook c8, the position is equal. And after queen d3 instead of queen c3, c4, black is closing the position, creating a majority of pawns on the queen side, queen d1, rook c8, the position is also equal. Well, white can play this position if he is well prepared as the position is quite um, imbalanced due to the, the different uh, pawn majorities, but uh, black hasn't to fear this position. So b5 is a good move. But in our game, black took uh, on d4 instead of playing b7, b5. C takes d4, knight d4, rook c8, protecting the c6 knight, knight c3, and now black finishing, finishes his uh, minor piece development by taking on d4 and playing the bishop to c5 with an attack on the queen. The queen goes to h4, this is the most active square. And now black committed a minor mistake by playing uh, bishop c6. This is a very logical move because exchanging the strong Catalan bishop g2 is one of the major goals black has in this opening, right? But it has some problems uh, coming with it. But before we look into that, let's, let's see what I would have played here with black. I would have played castling, giving up the b7 pawn for activity. After uh, rook b8, bishop f3, bishop, uh, pardon me, first rook b4, molesting the queen, queen g5, bishop d4. White's kingside is under pressure, so it's very difficult for white to finish his development as a bishop c1 cannot move right now. Queen d7, the queen wants to help out. Queen c7, applying pressure on the knight c3, also activating the rook on f8. Knight e1, rook b8, adding to the pressure on the b2 pawn. a3, rook a4, knight e3. h6, making air for the king. There's right now not much black can do to improve his position but the question is can white liberate his game here rook b1 e5 this was a game um petkov against wagner terme kates 2022 uh, black had enough compensation for the pawn white still has a slight edge but black is doing fine in this position so that's quite satisfactory for black in our game, however, instead of castling, black played bishop c6. 
Rook d1 attacking the queen, and now comes the big mistake. Queen d6. Instead of queen d6, queen a5 would have been the right move. Now, after a bishop takes c6, rook c6, a bishop g5 attacking the knight, bishop e7 defending the knight, knight e4 attacking the knight again. Now, black has to be careful because after knight takes e4, bishop e7 intending rook d8, there is a problem. So, black has to defend the knight f6 with his queen now. But white can liquidate into a very good ending. Knight takes, knight takes, takes, takes. And now rook c1. There was a game from Tienhoven Stukalov, email 2013, which followed king e7 question mark. Takes, takes, rook d4. White was clearly better in this rook ending because black had three isolated pawns. I propose to improve with rook takes c1 instead of king, instead of king e7. Um, rook takes c1, king d7, preventing rook c7. But now after e4, white is slightly better. He has a better pawn structure. And also the c-file. Black can now not oppose white's rook in the c-file because the pawn ending very likely would be lost for black. So this is plus equal here for white. Now in our game, black played queen d6, a very logical move. Um, meeting the threat, rook takes d8 with a counter attack. This is what you normally want to do. Yeah? If you have to defend, defend in an active way if possible. So now the f2 pawn is under pressure. I mean, white could play e3, but that would be very timid, right? Now the bishop c1, would uh, would be boxed in and um, black could simply um, castle and wouldn't have any problems right so e3 a terrible move much better is bishop takes c6 check okay normal move you exchange bishops but now comes the hammer if you have watched my previous videos, you have an idea what's coming now, right? So the hammer is actually bishop h6. Just ignoring the f2 pawn because, well, this battery with a bishop in front of the queen is not that powerful, right? If it would be the other way around and black could now play queen takes f2 check, that would be a different story. But this is quite harmless. So now, what can black do? Um, obviously, bishop takes g7 is a white idea. Let's start with g takes h6. Queen takes f6, attacking the rook, defending the f2 pawn. Black has to castle. And now we already see that black's king side is disrupted. Knight e4, very nice move, defending the pawn f2 one more time. And more importantly, um, intending queen takes h6 followed by knight f6 check and queen h7 check mate. So the f6 square is now the problem. Queen b4 attacking the knight. The knight is defended by the queen. Now the threat is knight f6 check when the king of black would have to move into the discover check. That would be terrible. So bishop e7 preventing knight f6 but after a3 queen a4 rook d4 attacking the queen and flirting with the square g4 if the queen moves now white would play um uh let me just instead of being abstract let me just uh, show you let's say queen a6 and if this now happens bishop f6 the game would be over very very quickly no, wait a second. Uh -huh. Not rook g4 because of bishop g5. We take first on f6. This is how we do it. And now rook g4 is a terrible threat. So this is not really appealing for black. That's why after rook d4 he has to play f6. But white can now simply take queen and after f e5 rook a7 black <clears throat> white has an extra pawn. 
and black spawn structure is very atrocious while the e4 knight is a monster so that's completely lost for black so that was the move g takes h6 another move of course is is castling defending the pawn g7 with the king but this is not a real defense because white simply plays bishop g7 destroying the defenses takes takes and now you see the problem white wins the knight back or the piece back with check having an extra pawn and even attacking now right so knight g5 can can come next move or queen g5 followed by knight f6 so this is also losing for black so what's left here let's see what happens after this check in case you might have wondered simply king g2 there was already a problem for black before bishop takes f2 because the king side was burning g7 under attack and now there's an additional problem with the liability on f2 the bishop is not uh, doing anything but it it is now hanging in case of doubt the queen has to keep it defended and for instance after g takes h6 queen f6 it already drops off the board because there's a double attack in place so bishop f2 is an absurd move not possible at all what can black do could he resign here well theoretically he could because white is actually winning after bishop h6 but there is a move keeping black in the game and that that's uh, the only move here for this is uh, bishop to f8 so black can still try to fight bishop f8 of course is not really a nice looking move because black plays into the wrong direction black is um, de developing his pieces that's why i titled this video the Re regression trap Bra black is forced to do this regression and this regression um, is quite a rare bird in in our game right you don't see this happening too often that's why this very game is very appealing to me so bishop f8 now white played i think it was a novelty i'm not 100 percent sure he played rook d2 there was a game which went rook d2 and that game already is very old it's a game ribli Ljubojevic, buenos aires 1978 so this trap is nothing new under the sun it is very um, well known um, but still very beautiful right so ribli deserves to be credited for this i think he was the first one to play bishop h6 portish also i know played it uh, um, around that time ribli by the way he was an extremely strong player i think there was a time he was top four in the world if i remember correctly and he was maybe back then the world's leading theoretician no wonder that he um, dug out this uh, opening trap Topalov now improved on on this move of Ripley's even though Ripley's move was good enough for winning but rook d3 is even a bit stronger um, in the game we saw e5 happening now let's have a look at knight d5 this is a line where the move rook d3 really proves to be very useful for white of course knight e5 now attacks the bishop h6 no knight on f6 anymore under pressure so g takes h6 now is the threat takes takes bishop e3 if now the queen would move black would be hopelessly behind in development so bishop c5 only move takes takes and now rook e3 check this is the difference between rook d2 and rook d3 this check it's quite nice if now rook e6 um white could play queen a4 checking the king 
if the king stays in the center, let's say after king e7, that would be uh, awful for for black. But after queen c6, queen h7, white would have an extra pawn and the better pawn structure. So there was a game after rook e3, which went king d7, check, queen takes g7, attacking the rook and the pawn, rook f8, rook d1, a6, and after this move, black already resigned. Itzat against Sukandar, Adelaide, 2018. Well, actually, I also went to Adelaide 30 years prior to that game, in the year 1988, playing the World Junior Championship. Now, in our game here, after Rook D3, we saw Van Willi playing E5 by protecting the knight. There, again, is the threat of G takes h6 bishop e3 attacking the queen and now van willi played queen f5 there were two other games here in this position with other moves let's um have a look the position is important because i claim that white is already winning here so i, I have to prove it queen f6 this is a game plachetka lawton copenhagen 1984 95 takes takes threatening rook d8 checkmate f6 another mate is threatened on d7 rook c7 rook a d8 queen c6 check and now after um, rook c1 black resigned black is losing material here the other game here uh, went Queen takes b2. This is Bandiera Turner, email 2011. Queen b2, attacking the rook, rook b1. Queen c2, and now queen g5 is very strong because now the rook cannot take on c3. So queen g5 is attacking the pawn e5 <clears throat> indirectly, defending this knight on c3 because after queen e5 check, Bishop e7, rook takes b7, threatening checkmate, threatening queen takes e7, checkmate, so castling. And now, after queen c3, of course, white is up an exchange and a pawn. In the game, black, instead of taking on c3, played bishop e7, anticipating the check on e5. Queen e5 happening anyways, castling, rook c1, queen b2. Queen e7 takes, but white simply could recapture the rook and now black resigned. Van Veli played, as I mentioned, another move. He played not queen a6 or queen takes b2, he played, played queen a5. Over protecting the e5 pawn and, uh, well, the queen on a5 looks reasonably, reasonably uh, placed there. Now the best move here actually would be uh, rook 81. Topolov played bishop g5. Rook 81 is uh, considerably stronger. After bishop e7, b4 is a good move. Now uh, the bishop cannot take there because of rook d8 check. But if the queen takes, pardon me, first queen takes b4. If the queen takes here, we see uh, white simply winning the rook on a8 h8 so queen um, c7 is another move but now knight b5 attacking the queen queen b8 bishop a7 winning a pawn and then some so this is also hopeless after b4 what else is there for black to play queen a3 knight d5 attacking the queen with the rook knight takes d5 attacking the Queen on h4, but after rook a3, bishop h4, rook d5, bishop f6, rook a7, white has won a pawn, and there's another pawn for the taking. This pawn cannot be defended in view of the major threat rook a8 check, picking up the rook on h8. So rook 81 is winning very quickly. 
but it was a blindfold game remember this um, there Topalov played bishop g5 which might be the second best move bishop e7 rook a to d1 now black finally managed to castle but after bishop takes f6 bishop f6 queen e4 white had a one position well this deserves pausing a bit here let let this sink in so i mean why is this winning for white black managed to castle equal material but yet look how the pieces differ in terms of activity white has a d file so there's a rook supposed to enter the seventh rank on d7 pressure rising the pawns on that seventh rank then we have a, a very active queen on e4 and a knight which has a nice square on d5 black is mostly suffering from his very bad bishop on f6 which is hindered by his fellow pawn on e5 i was interested in, to know how the position would look like with a pawn on e6 so i i I, I built up this position, letting the engine run over it, and the engine gave equality. This position is equal. Black has a better minor piece now. Here it was White's knight, which was clearly superior to the bishop, but here it's the other way around. The bishop f6 is very strong because the knight c3 doesn't have a good square, and the bishop is exerting some pressure on the diagonal. But white has a d file. This is keeping the position in balance. So this position serves very nicely to demonstrate that a very tiny difference, a pawn on e5 or e6, makes a huge difference in the evaluation of the position. This is a one position opposed to the equal position with a pawn on e6. Well, now we don't have to be too detailed here in what comes. Um, I, I, I move through the rest of the game rather quickly because we already demonstrated how white could have played better than, than the game with the move rook to d1. So I already demonstrated that bishop h6 was clearly winning. Now uh, white played b3, better would have been knight d5 attacking uh, the rook. Let's say rook takes b2, takes, takes. And here you see that black's king side is a problem with the doubled pawns there on the f-file. Queen f5, very strong move, attacking the f6 pawn. And if now rook b6, rook d4, another very strong move. The e5 pawn is pinned and you see the rook is headed to h4 attacking the soft spot h7 a good example how to attack this um, bad pawn structure here after knight d5 the better move is rook c6 but now a4 white actually is in no hurry here because his position is uh, winning in the long term oh, well a4 is well, uh, gaining a bit of space, but uh, first of all, it is preserving the A pawn. So the pawn was hanging before on A2, not anymore. Black makes some air for his king. And white really improves his position. There's not much black can do here. He's quite paralyzed. For instance, A6, rook F3, trying to um, uh, make a demolition again here on the king side by taking on um, f6 so the bishop has to uh, remove and after rook b3 the e5 pawn is under attack and the b7 pawn so white will be winning a pawn here um, what else can black do he could move the bishop away immediately bishop d8 b3 over protecting the a4 pawn so now queen takes e5 is a threat before black could have answered with queen takes a4 
Rook e6 defending this e5 pawn, but after knight e3, black is in the doldrums. Um, there is a threat of queen takes b7, but white also can play the rook to d7, and then either put the knight on c4 or f5, for instance, b5, saving the b pawn. But now after b4, queen d6, a5, queen b8, knight f5, you know the words of Kasparov, he said, a knight on f5 is worth a pawn. So this knight, of course, is very strong there, applying a lot of pressure to black's king side. Um, bishop f6, overprotect, overprotecting g7, because queen g4 is in the air in such positions, right? Overprotecting the e pawn and the g7 pawn. But now we see uh, white penetrating black's position on the seventh uh, rank, a6 putting this pawn uh, to safety, but after queen g4, threatening uh, knight takes h6, so king h8 is forced, e4, queen a8, rook c1, intending to double on the seventh rank, and black is helpless. Black is just too passive here. He cannot play rook c8 because the f7 pawn would be falling. So this would have been White's best course of action, knight d5. He played b3. This is a move you typically play in a blindfold uh, match. The b2 was under attack, so you defend it. Now rook b4 is not the best move, but even after g6, the better alternative, Black was still losing. And now queen f3 would have been the best move, but let's just skip these alternative lines. Uh, I, I very quickly now show you how the game was finished. Queen f5, queen f6, and now white liquidated. He played knight d5 attacking the rook. There's nothing better than rook d4, takes, takes, and now we see this liquidation into a one rook ending. Without the doubled pawns, uh, it wouldn't have been that clear. Let's say the pawn would be on g6, because in rook endings, very often you have drawing chances despite a minus pawn. But here, white not only has an extra pawn, but black's kingside pawn structure is wrecked. Rook c8, rook c4, of course, the pawn ending is lost, so rook d8, e3. Um, putting this pawn on the safe square, because black was about to play rook d2, which he does nevertheless, trying to get some counterplay. a4, rook a2, rook c7, b6, takes. Okay, now black wins back this pawn there on, on the queen side. Rook a6, rook takes b3, a5, that's a strong move. Now it would have been a grave mistake to take the a pawn because this position is drawn again. Double pawns, even though they are weak in general, they are quite good defenders. So these pawns on f7 and f6, they prevent white from creating a passed pawn. So this is a drawn position. But of course, Topolov knew that and he took the pawn on f6. Now white has a winning pawn majority on the king side. The only question is whether black's a pawn is a danger. It's not a danger because white is able to put his rook behind the pawn. Rook a3, king g2, rook a1, g4, a3, h4, a2. The only thing white has to, to be careful with is to put his king on a square where it can be checked. Of course, king g3 would be a severe mistake and black would be winning. So everything but this move, right? King h3 would be similar bad. But h5, h6, and now king f3 is simply winning because the f2 pawn is shielding white's king. So the next two moves will be e4, I guess, and then king f4, followed by king f5 and pawn f4. And White's majority would simply do the drop 
The rook on a1 is quite passive. And of course, if we play king f4, rook f1 wouldn't be um, any good because rook takes a2 would um, protect the pawn on f2. That's why Van Veli duly resigned in this uh, position. I hope you like this uh, bishop h6 example. Uh, what I found quite intriguing is this mechanism which forced black to, to undo his um, prior development. See you in the next video. Have a good time. Bye bye.